Well, yes, hello, dear viewer. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan, with your post-match presser, huh? For Chelsea away at Anfield. All square, ladies and gentlemen, as it always seems to be versus... Well, Chelsea versus Liverpool. I think, like, last two games last season were a draw, and I think previous, the last three meetings were nil-nil. So is this the fourth nil-nil in a row, including the cup finals with extra time, having no goals... Goals? Goals scored... <laughs> So they just don't score against each other. It's not for the want of trying. Um, but, you know, the up and down, exciting moments. This game was ultimately the, you know, the dysfunctional derby or the dysfunction derby. Both teams languishing in mid-table. Ultimately, of course, a point not great for either either team, but it is better for Chelsea. Chelsea played a peculiar lineup. Um, we're learning about our team a little more. It was actually a very... A lot, a lot of the game was very clever from Graham Potter. He used two formations in this game to nullify the Liverpool press. Uh, Liverpool got a win last time out against Wolves in the cup replay. We, of course, beat Crystal Palace, who, by the way, drew against Manchester United last game out. So both teams, you could say, are slightly in the ascendancy. And with all things considered, you can't be that disappointed with a point and a clean sheet away at Anfield, especially considering we're waiting for players to come back. We're waiting for new signings to be able to start. And, of course, we saw Mikhailo Mudrik look absolutely incredible in his short cameo in terms of his play style, his fearlessness, and his directness. We've had poor performances in this game. Uh, and we had interesting good performances in this game. We're going to talk about it. So, thanks for joining me. Just drop a like. I'd like to quickly put our request in there. It takes a millisecond, and it's a way of supporting the channel. Liking and subscribing, should you want to do so anyway. Uh, and I'm always, always very, very keen to read your comments about, um, you know, transfer news, subject matter, or indeed, football matches. Uh, so... Jurgen Klopp paid a 4-3-3 like he is always inclined to do. And we sort of played a 4-2-3-1 slash 3 4 2 one it, it, it depends where the Liverpool had the, the ball on the pitch. Like, um, a lot of the time it was sort of 4-3-3 with Hall in the midfield. Um, and... Um, and a lot of times it went it went to a back four. So when playing a back three, it was Kepa, Rita Balaga in goal. Um, and it was Badia Sheila on the left, Silver in the middle, and Chalaba coming in on the right-hand side. So, and Kukurea would play left wing back. Ziesh would play right wing back. Hall in Jorginho in the midfield. Mount and Gallagher behind Havertz. Um, not the most goal-scoring offensive front three you'll ever hear in your life. <laughs> Mason Mount, Conor Gallagher, and Havertz, though, you know, good footballers, though I think Mount has actually been in pretty poor form. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but yes, but when when not a back three, Kukurea comes back to left back, and Chalaba makes a, is a right back, and then Ziyech is sort of right mid, and uh, Hall is kind of like left mid, and Jorginho's uh, central pivot. Very, very interesting. I did like the fact how we relatively seamlessly switched formations throughout this game because we've had for the first time, it may be the first time in Graham Potter's Chelsea career, an entire week, or maybe after the World Cup, but certainly one of the rare instances where instances where he had a week to uh, to prepare for a game. Uh, Liverpool away at Anfield, of course, is a big game. We actually had the majority of possession, just over 52% away at Anfield. We had a better pass success. We won more aerials. Um, despite having more of the ball, we actually made more tackles as well, which shows we're getting stuck in. Uh, um... Okay, we saw substitute appearances from um, the first, the very first substitute was in the second half. By the way, it's worth saying, in the first half, we were the better team. Like, clearly. It was a game of two halves, you know. Uh, Liverpool started the second half, like, much more on top. But we were ultimately the best, the better team in the first half. Of course, Kai Havertz had a goal correctly ruled off for offside, like, minutes in. It could have been a goal if, you know, things went the other way. But um, apart from that, we, we were making Liverpool not look very good in the first half. And that largely is, well, almost probably exclusively down to Graham Potter's tactics and coaching for this game. And though we haven't had an opportunity to, to praise him much for this this season, largely for a bunch of variable factors that some are out of his control, some are not. But he coached a very, very good uh, game plan for this game to play against Liverpool. And in the first half, 
had he had more first choice players, new signings ready or whatever, a bit more luck, we should have been ahead. Of course, in the second half, Liverpool come out on top and we see our first substitution and we see Lewis will come off for Mikhailo or apparently it's Mihailo, but English say call it Mikhailo. Mudrick, he comes on for that left flank uh, and immediately terrifies James Milner getting James Milner gets a yellow card and then we see um, Trent Alexander all not uh, long after N Nunez comes on as well and some, they change the midfield we also bring on uh, Bama Yang for Havertz like for like uh, Trev gets a bit of an injury so as Piliqueta comes on for his 500th appearance for Chelsea um, and and also Akani Chukwemeka comes on for Mason Mount in the 82nd minute I think that probably could have happened a lot earlier um, so let's talk about player performances then um, in goal Kepp was good He's got a very high rating here. I'm looking on this uh, stats website. Uh, I think he's good, yeah. Saved some shots, was calm on the ball. No, Absolutely no complaints with Kepa in this in this match. And I imagine people will feel the same as I do with that. Uh, let me do. Let me know in the comment section. Um, in terms of defenders, very pleased with the centre-backs. Um, Benoit Badia-Shiel looks like he's been with us forever. I just realised the... Um, I've got an issue with my green screen here. I don't know why that's happening. Uh, Aperture's messed up a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm not actually in a press conference room. What is happening? <laughs> Sorry if that's really annoying. I'll make sure it's fixed for the next game. Um, but yeah, very, very pleased. Game video. My brain is scrambled. Benoit Badiashiel, very impressive. He looks calm. He looks like he's, he's not perfect, but he's relatively seamlessly just dropped in. And if I was Kalido Koulibaly, I would be very, very worried and um, expecting probably a transfer in the summer in terms of just this guy is 21 and looks like he's going to lock down the left centre-back role. And when Thiago Silva's not playing, it's probably going to be Wesley Fofana when he when he returns. Um, Thiago Silva, imperious, um, evergreen on the BT coverage. He won man of the match, um, I think, deservedly as well. It's just incredible. I said after the first half, both centre-backs and Hakim Ziyech have impressed me. Uh, Chalaba was okay. Kukurea was much better. Um, he obviously had been benched for Lewis Hall at left back for a long while, but this was an opportunity for both of them to start and play together. Of course, Hall playing his preferred role in the midfield. So very, very pleased with uh, Kukurea in terms of um, how much better he's, he was in this game. Away at Anfield as well, to be dropped back in uh, after your coach and Graham Potter is saying, like, yeah, he's not been in the greatest form, but just drops him in at Anfield. Do you know what I mean? It was good. Ziyech, very, very good, especially in that first half and certain parts of the second half. He's just that guy who plays the creative passes from deep. We don't have anyone else that does that. So, you know, maybe Thiago Silva, but it's not really his job as a centre-back. Um, Jorginho is more metronomic, but Ziyech played a lot of perfect crosses in the box. Of course, he got the assist for the winner the last time out. He put a few perfect balls in. One that I have actually just... I don't... He sort of ruined it. And it's a shame because Havertz started the game so well. Um, just... We'll, we'll move our way up to uh, forward. Um, so, Jorginho, it wasn't his type of game, is the co commentary correctly highlighted. It wasn't like when you put your foot on the ball and get a lot of touches. It was manic. Neither team had won the midfield very well. It was chaotic, and that doesn't really suit Jorginho. But despite all that, I think he still played pretty well. Um, yes, yeah, Ziyech is very good. I thought he was. Uh, Lewis Hall uh, made a few mistakes, a couple high profile. But I'm not going to criticise him because he's an 18-year-old who's played multiple positions for Chelsea. And when this young lad irons out said mistakes, he looks like a real, real good player. And is confident. And that's probably why he makes mistakes. Because he's confident to try perhaps more risky and brave maneuvers and passes. And, you know, he gets caught in possession a little bit. Um, yeah, but you'd be silly to criticise him for that. Because he's a teenager. And he's been just dropped into the first team in these massive games. So he will develop. And, uh, you know, it's, it's okay to highlight. But not to criticise, I think. Now, Conor Gallagher, I don't think he was particularly good in the first half. When he moved further up in the second half and he was playing and combining with Mikhail Mudrik, he was so much better. And in fact, we affect after the devastatingly worrying early stages of the second half when Liverpool just absolutely sat on Chelsea. When we got back into the game, um, Mudrick was a massive part of that, but also Gallagher going further up and playing in like a sort of number 10. Uh, yeah, it was much better. It's because he can run around, press and stick a tackle in that people play him deeper. But um, 
he's really effective in the final third sometimes. I'm not saying Gallagher's going to definitely be uh, a Chelsea starter forever. You know, we've got Felix coming back. We've got, um, you know, other forwards that we're signing. So I, I can't say for sure. He may just play his way into the team, but he is talented, Conor Gallagher, like Mason Mount. We're going to talk about him in a minute. But he, in this particular game, was very effective in the second half when he was moved further up the pitch. Kai Havertz, good. Um, I tweeted out early duels in the first half that I think Pot is actually developing his game to be a really much more useful forward. He's not this goal-scoring monster, and he said it himself the other day. It's totally true. He's not, but he has. He was good, man. Like even like not not the offside goal. His movement. The Liverpool centre backs didn't know what to do with him because they didn't know where he was going, what, where he, where he was going, what he was doing. And I feel like he was useful. He did mess up a couple of chances. He he, what, he ca- can still get a lot better. I'm hoping he will. I hope this is like a progressive trend where Conor Gall- um where uh, Kai Havertz. Sorry, I'm looking at this green screen glitch and it's really annoying me. Maybe that's better. Have I fixed it? Maybe. Um, yeah, so I'm pleased with the development of Kai Havertz. And, you know, long may it continue under Graham Potter. We'll talk about the subs in a moment. Mason Mount was poor. Um, he played one beautiful ball when Ziyech ne- the, nearly scored. This, like, the, <laughs> the, like An iconic Anfield goal. Like Eden Hazard uh, Anfield goal. Where he was like dribbling around everyone and, and smashed it at the end. And just got underneath it a little bit. But he was... Is an amazing piece of work from Ziyech. But before, there was this one-touch pass from Mount that was like a world-class action. But despite that, he had a bad game. Uh, poor decision-making. Um, just not overly great. He's had a couple of good games this season, but he's been off the boil. And um, I love Mason Mount. Maybe the contract negotiations is distracting him. I think he's an excellent player. Uh, incidentally, that Liverpool are monitoring Mason Mount. If he doesn't extend with Chelsea, they will snap him up believe me um and we would hate well i would hate that but despite all that i feel like he needs to ride the bench a little bit sort his contract out get his head back in the game graham potter loves him we know that i think he was poor in this game and um i think in place of mason mount we should see a bit more carney chukwameka because um He's uh, he's physical. He he could seemingly combined really well with Mudrick in that in that final third. Um, he obviously slipped over in the end, but we could have probably scored a winner. But uh, yeah, he looks. Um, you know, we keep saying about it again. A teenager, only nineteen himself, looks very very uh, good. So I, personally, I would. Um, although his last start, I believe, was at Crystal Palace. He was probably didn't actually have a good performance in that. So he's look. <laughs> he's one of those players that looks better off the bench, which. I don't want to give him the Christian Pulisic thing when, like, you know, Pulisic looks amazing off the bench, but sometimes not when he starts. I don't want to say that about Chuck Wemmerker so early in his Chelsea career and hope not. But I think because of his sub appearances, even though his last start wasn't great, I would start him certainly over Mason Mount for a few games. Um, Aubameyang didn't really do anything. Um, Azpilicueta, good for his 500th appearance. El Capitan, he, and let's be real... Uh, as Pilaqueta has been quite poor recently, so to come off the bench and play calmly and make a couple of good blocks, chest it back to Kepa, really, really, you know, showing his experience, very good, very pleased with Pilaqueta. So Batman didn't do much. We've spoken about Chuck Wemeka looking good, but for me, the man of the moment in terms of something to nail our colours to the mast into in terms of excitement is microphones up. Are we going to put the microphones up? No, that's like and subscribe. Then hold on, the microphones. Guys, press. Here we are. Welcome to the press room. Mikhailo Mudrik, Eden Hazard regen. In terms of confidence with the ball at his feet and just being very fast. I'm just excited. Put the microphones down. So basically, I'm not... He's not... He, Hazard was really explosive in the first couple of yards. Mudrik looks like that as well. But Mudrik, of course, clocks his top speed is profound. He's literally just turned 22, like, but days ago. And most importantly, he looks hella confident. He looks hella confident in himself, not reliant on players around him. If you're there to combine, he looks like he will be able to combine, like a few touches with Conor Gallagher. Incidentally, like the two English sort of attacking midfielders, Chuck Wimaka and Conor Gallagher, he looked like he combined with them very, very well. It makes you lick your lips about when Jao Felix comes into the team and combines with Mikhailo Mudrik. It makes you think when those two start connecting in the final third, 
we're going to see some seriously exciting and scintillating offensive football. So, for a nil-nil, I actually extracted a lot out of this game. So, I'd be very keen to learn what you think. Remember to comment all your thoughts on the game and the players down below. Thank you for dropping a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new. It, it's still the January transfer window and there's stories. So, turn the bell on when you subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys very soon. I love you lots. I do.